Hey, so in this video I'm just going to explain who Mike Themer is for. So broadly speaking, it's for non-coders that have some interest in learning CSS, and developers already have that knowledge. So there are two main goals of Mike Themer, to level up beginners and not let the, the UI limit coders in any way. So in terms of leveling up beginners, Mike Themer displays the CSS code it's generating, and also gives you information about the HTML that's already in place and the CSS that's already affecting the page. Uh, and then over on the right, um, on this advanced pane, um, to begin with, you can kind of ignore what's... Um, so say we wanted to target all four of these uh, list items. What we could do is just look out for the number four, um, ignoring the code here. Um, but I recommend when you're ready, if you do uh, learn a little bit about CSS and how it relates to HTML, and we've got a video about that called HTML and CSS Inspection, which is in the interface section of the docs. Then uh, you'll actually be able to master the design process, um, and because Mike Thema is designed, you know, it's a flexible tool that you can use to style any kind of WordPress content, um, and you're engaging with the actual uh, like HTML on the page. Uh, rather than, say, with a page builder where the options are predefined. Um, so the, the content is all kind of done without writing code, and then the styling is very specific to that content, but it's not flexible in the way that, you know, if you, you want to, say, <clears throat> style a contact form that's made using a different application or a theme footer or stuff like that. Um, the the trade-off, if you like, that Mike Theme provides is it, it gives you insights and helps you along the way to learning how to actually customize that kind of content going off the rails, as it were. Um, but uh, you know, if you learn, if you try and do it all just visually, just by clicking and, and not really paying any attention to what the, the CSS and HTML means, in the long run, um, you'll probably find that it's harder than if you just invest a little bit of time up front kind of learning how this works. So I'll cover that in another a video. Um, and in terms of uh, like letting coders uh, do, you know, implement their knowledge um, without limiting them, um, which is one of Mike Thema's main goals, um, partly because, you know, for, this relates to beginners as well, because if you're using Mike Thema as a tool to learn, you don't want to reach a point where you have to then discard it and, and just write everything by code, let's say, without without using without benefiting from kind of some of the time saving stuff that the UI provides. Um, so as an example of the flexibility um, that Mike Thema provides, uh, let's just save this selector here. And uh, with the f one thing to mention is that with the fields. Um, you can enter anything you like. Uh, so some of the fields have drop downs. So like, so for instance, font, font weight, let's say, um, they have a drop down just if you're more likely to want to choose from like a preset small list of options. And they have, um, let's go back to padding. They have this option here where, um, there are still options available, um, to choose from, but you can, you're more likely to say just want to enter in your own value. But while we've got the options open, I'll just give you an example. Like you can enter, if you've got SAS enabled, you can enter SAS variables. Um, you can always enter CSS variables um, and functions like calc and clamp into these fields. So calc, oh, that's a bit of a crazy one. Let's try this one. Um, so you're not limited in terms of the CSS property values that you enter. And also, um, if you want to, uh, let's have the code editor as well. You can, well, first of all, you can, you can, if you want to just have one sidebar, you can switch between the two like this, or you can have them both displaying at the same time. Um, so, for instance, if I, I've got, I've, I've expanded these fine tuning options here, um, we could have the styling options on the top, and then we've got. Uh, so, if I go to the spacing here, we've got these options here, and kind of this, this will synchronize um, with the UI and the code editor, um, and you can also enter custom properties. Uh, if you, um, if the, if the custom property that you enter here is, you know, so I could, I could say padding right, um, to M, uh, then that will show up here because we've got padding right option in the UI fields. If it's something that isn't supported by the UI, um, you can still add it. It's just, it'll only be editable here. And uh, the synchronization that I've just demonstrated, um, that's, that only happens if you haven't got support for SAS enabled. Support for SAS isn't, isn't enabled by default. 
um, but you can enable that via the preferences. So let's scroll up here to the preferences. And what we do is we'd set uh, SAS support to yes, and it just tells you that you won't be able to sync with the editor. Um, also, if you're a bit more experienced, you probably want to turn off the use of global important styles. Um, that's just a setting that's there to help beginners get started before they're ready to learn about CSS specificity. So if we save this, uh, you can see that uh, the editor now is just empty. Uh, this clamp uh, setting is only editable by the UI options. And then here you can enter any kind of custom SAS or just custom code. So the two things are separate. Um, so the final thing to point out for coders is that there is um, also a view for just entering uh, purely uh, raw CSS or SAS or JavaScript code. Um, so here we have an, en uh, an editor that you could enter things like. It's, it's useful, A, if you just want to write CSS that's not in the simple uh, CSS selector rule format. Um, of a you know a selector and, and a property and a property value, so you would th and enter things like um, CSS imports or SAS imports, um, animations, custom fonts, uh, media queries if, without using the um, options uh, in the other view, um, or if you just prefer just to write everything via code. Um, uh, an advantage of using MicroTheme, if you're just using it very simply as a code editor, um, is that you get to see the changes on screen straight away, and the SAS compilation is really quick too. Um, with the JavaScript editor, it's just one thing to mention is that you, um, unlike with the CSS, it, uh, MicroTheme won't auto-save as you're writing, um, but if you just use Control s keyboard shortcut, then MicroTheme will just reload the page so you can see the effect of your JavaScript. Uh, oh, and a final thing to note actually is that um, in a upcoming, so this is right now we're at seven version seven, um, around seven point one. Um, we're going to retire this um, as a separate view, and you will be able to add uh, custom CSS uh, and JavaScript um, to the folders, and that way you'll be able to just have uh, manage multiple, uh, say, SAS snippets or JavaScript snippets to keep things a bit more organised, and you'll also be able to conditionally apply, apply page logic to the folders um, for some optimization reasons. So yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, thank you for watching.